In today's video, we'll take a look at what actually is a header file. Now I'm gonna actually use the source code from the string replace video, which you can check up top. There we just create a simple function that uh, replaces a substring inside a source uh, string. But we don't care about the actual source code inside this function. We just care about this func the definition of function itself. So what we want is think, uh, think about a multi-file project, right? Let's say we had multiple files, a project that had multiple files and we wanted to have this function in its own file. How would we actually do that? Well, first things first, we would have to create that source file, right? So I'm gonna go here, right click, simply add new item. And I'm gonna say C++, but it's actually gonna be a C file. So I'm gonna call it, let's call it string utils, right? I'm gonna add all the utils in here. <coughs> and hit add. Okay, and that's gonna create my file here. That's nice. I can now copy my function inside this file. So I can go ahead and just select the whole thing if the editor allows me to, and just paste it here. And as you might notice, I'm gonna get a few errors saying the null is undefined, size t is undefined. That's because those actually reside into either stdlib or string.h. So I'm gonna also add the includes in here. All right. and well, technically that's all there is to it. If I try to run this, you'll notice that the project actually runs perfectly. You can start using it. Now this only really works because the main.c file and stringutils.c are both compiled in the same compilation unit. But if uh, we would have them in separate projects, this, uh, this function wouldn't work. Now we can tell that this wouldn't work just by looking at the signature here. As you notice, the signature is just some default signature saying int string replace, not actually giving us any sort of information about the call itself, right? But when we run it, it's fine and uh, it works. How can we set up so that the, the tooltip here shows the proper signature? How can we do that? Well, a quick and dirty way to do this is to just include the C file in your main file. So just like you include a string.h or stdlib.h, you can include a source file. You can say hashtag include and inside double quotes, we use double quotes because that's local, right? We use angled brackets if it's a standard library or, or if it's an external library, okay? So here we use double quotes uh, because it's a local file and I use string utils.c. And now if I try to look at it, oh, the tooltip actually works. It says, okay, it has, it returns a chart pointer. It takes in a chart pointer and all those parameters. And it works nicely. So now if I run this, well, you'll notice that it doesn't actually work. Why is that? Why does it crash? Well, that's actually because of the way include works. What does include do? Include simply takes in the content from here and just kind of plops it in here, right? That's fine. That's fine because that's basically how the code was before uh, we started the video. The only issue is we also have the string utils file. So in effect, we're compiling both string utils, which has the string replace function and our main file, which also will have the string replace function, right? Because what include does copies the content that's copying this function. So we basically have two definitions of the same function in the same compilation unit, not the same file. There are two different files, but we're compiling them together. Okay. So this is the issue. This is what it's saying here. One or more multiply defined symbols found basically uh, saying that it's been already defined. You have defined string, uh, replace here. Why are you trying to define it here as well inside main? So how do you fix that? You fix that through header files. So before we get into explaining what is a header file, I'm gonna first create one. So here I'm gonna go ahead and create a simple header file. I'm gonna match the name with what we have here. So string underscore utils dot h. Edit. Okay, so we get this pragma once thing in here and then uh, no code, no nothing. What is the difference between a header file and a just .c file? Basically, in a header file, you only have declarations. You declare that a variable 
exists, you declare that a function exists, but you don't actually define it, meaning you don't actually provide the implementation of it. Okay, so what I can do here to just provide the declaration of our string replace function, I just have to copy the signature of it. So I'm going to copy everything except what is between the uh, the brackets. So copy and paste and then a semicolon at the end. Now this is almost going to work. I'm going to also include uh, string.h because I'm using size t here. So I just want to make sure. So include string.h uh, like so. All right. And what next? So we have this that declares the function, just declares it, doesn't define it. We have this that actually declares and defines it. And we have main on C. How do we actually use it? In main, instead of here having string utils dot h dot c included, we're going to actually include string utils dot h, and that's the, the difference is pretty obvious. What it's going to do is just taking the the contents from string utils dot h, which is just this basically, and they include itself. But that doesn't really matter because it, we already have the include in string dot h. So now, if I try to run it. Now you'll notice that it actually works, right? We have uh, this code that just kind of replaces apples with hamburgers, right? That's fine, it works. But why? Aren't we, don't we have uh, the same function twice again? Because, well, we, we declare this function here. So you basically copy and paste, the, the preprocessor copies and paste this over here, and then it launches it. And should we get an error because we have this function here and also in here? No, because there's a catch. There's a difference between defining and declaring. You can declare a variable, a function, as many times as you want in a program, but you can only define it once. Okay, here we are declaring it, right? and also defining it. But inside our header file, we're just declaring it. So there are two declares and one define. Okay. Let me get back to this code here. And really, you, you can copy this declaration as many times as you want. If you want to have three definition declarations of the same function, have at it. This works, right? This should work. And it's going to compile perfectly because you just declared the same function three times. Of course, if this was different, for example, if this was an uh, int pointer, well, things are not going to go pretty well because it's going to actually, as you can see here, if I highlight the tooltip, it's going to work, but it's going to say that it wants an int pointer instead of a string pointer, right? So the last declaration applies. But if they are the same, you can do it as many times as you want. It doesn't hurt. Now, one more thing I want to talk about is this prang pragma once or something else you might see in other compilers. This is kind of specific to visual uh, C is instead of pragma once you'd say, you'd see something like if and if, uh, I'll say, I think it's string utils H, then define string utils H and down here and if something like this. So this version or the pragma once thing do exactly the same thing. Basically, uh, what this guy does is check if this identifier was defined in in the preprocess or not in the actual program. Then if it was not defined, so if not defined, then it's going to define it right here and then actually uh, add the code here and only here it ends the if. Right, so the next time it comes around and somebody actually includes the same header file again, it's just like if not defined string utils dot h. Well, string string utils h is already defined because it was defined here. So don't do anything. So it just doesn't do anything, right? It doesn't actually copy this code again. So this is the same as that pragma once here, saying that you will only include or really copy the contents of this file once inside a compilation unit. You can include this file as many times as you want. So if I just go here and 
increased four times it's fine it's not gonna break it's not gonna do anything uh wrong because we have this guard here that says that okay i'm gonna actually copy and paste this four times because there's no need to do that you're gonna paste it only once this helps if you're using this same uh the same header file in multiple uh source files right so this is what the header file is it's a way of sharing code between source files or between libraries okay so this header file can be included in as many as many source files as you want because there's a pragma ones because there's only declarations and uh, you don't define it multiple times so when you compile the code uh, this guy is actually gonna tell the program where to look for that function and this function is going to be found here in this other source file which is going to be compiled alongside it but the code itself is not going to contain this definition multiple times okay i hope i hope you sort of understand what's going on here this is a definition and declaration and this is just a declaration so that's the main gist of it and you can declare as many times as you want a a function or a variable but you can only define it once and other things that you can add here in a header file are uh, macros useful macros that you use here you would go ahead and define them like so so let's say my macro of x i don't know x plus two or something uh that would define my macro and only once really uh, this is where I would actually define it inside a header file, not inside a source file, unless I just use it inside that source file, not anywhere else. But if I want to use it in multiple files, I would define it inside a header file. And also global variables are added inside the header because, well, if you only add the global variables inside uh, main, so this would be a global variable, right? In A, let's say, this A here would be global in the sense that it can be accessed from anywhere, but not every program knows about it. So if you were to compile this into a library, another project wouldn't be able to see it because uh, you would have to actually include a header file that says, okay, there exists a variable called a with the type int, and then the compiler will let you actually use it. In a later video, we'll take a look at how to actually define, uh, declare and define global variables using header files. For now, I hope you understand what a header file is, what should go in here, just the declaration, and what should go in other, in its respective source file. As you can see, each header file usually has a source file at, with the same name, but a different extension. And actually all there is to it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care.